Hi, my name is Allie Zell, and I'm a sophomore biological engineering major from Springdale, Arkansas. The piece of artwork I've decided to focus on resides in the Crystal Bridges Museum of Modern Art in Benville, Arkansas. My piece is actually a sculpture called The Depression Breadline by George Seagull. The sculpture depicts a standard American practice in the Great Depression, one of the worst economic collapses in the United States that caused thousands of banks to fail and left upwards of 15 million Americans unemployed. Bread lines would be open in the cities to provide the citizens with food when they couldn't even feed themselves. The Depression bread line helps to portray the helplessness of the American people in the literal depression in their spirits and lives. George Siegel was originally trained as a painter. He attended many schools, including New York University and Rutgers. He later became a sculptor. During his time of training and teaching, pop art and abstractionism was all the rage. But Siegel, however, was interested in concentrating on making statements of the real world and about figurative themes. George Siegel created this sculpture in 1991 to evoke the emotional tenure of FDR's extraordinary four presidential terms. Siegel was actually a stand-in model for this sculpture, as a second model from the left. Siegel's depression breadline has five men sculpted, and the general perspective is usually looking straight on. It gives the sculpture a horizontal composition that helps to emphasize no action in the stillness of time, the stillness of waiting for bread, and how the Great Depression put a hold on many people's lives. The deep achromatic colors with a majority of blacks and grays helps to show the harshness of the time and the dismal outlook on life. There was an emptiness in their bellies, their banks, and their hearts, and the black represents this empty vessel. Siegel's sculpture is a sculpture in the round, which means it's a freestanding sculpture that can be viewed from all sides. The medium is a combination of wood, metal, acrylic paint, and plaster. The wood and metal give it a rigid and strong feel, whereas the plaster make the men and brick hard and stiff. It gives the overall sculpture a rough and immovable nature. The naturalistic style, as opposed to idealized, shows the reality of the time period depicted. Through the Marxism lens, the Depression breadline makes a statement about the working class, a statement that says the working class is beneath the elite. The working class of society is not given frivolous dinners and parties, but instead they're subject to dark streets and breadlines. The sculpture alludes to the suffering that the lower class went through. George Siegel's Depression Breadline is a sculpture that falls in the pop art time period of art history. Pop art embraced objectivity and everyday objects. Popular pop art artists include Andy Warhol, Jasper Johns, and Tom Wesselman. George Siegel followed this influence of drawing imagery from the real world, but his sculptures maintain more of a reality. For the Depression Breadline, Siegel chose men that he called very close friends, so they were everyday men to him. Siegel's sculpture also references realism. Sculptures and realism focus more on natural observations and social and political values. This art helps to show the true happenings of the time period and the raw actions of those that were not the elite. Siegel brings these ideals into the pop art era as he professes his humanistic passion and a desire to show the truth. I chose this piece because of its significance in American history. I've always loved American history. And I find it absolutely amazing how social classes can be turned upside down and how people's way of life can be changed in an instant. And I feel like this sculpture embodies that. The Depression breadline shows the consequences of actions in our history. I think George Siegel's use of actual people in their faces as the men in the line helped to show at any time you could fall dependent on others. This shows that this downfall is tragic and not completely unimaginable for everyone. I believe that this sculpture has immense nationalistic value. The sculpture depicts one of the United States citizens' most vulnerable times. This sculpture helps Americans remember, though, that it is not our failures that define us, but the way in which we come back from them that tells our story. I believe it's also of great nationalistic value because a bronze cast resides in a national memorial. When I traveled to Washington, D.C. and saw our nation's capital, I remembered walking through FDR's memorial and seeing this sculpture the sculpture that successfully grasps a piece of time and will hold its history forever.